Here, I'm going to demo the adaptive user portal from the end user perspective. To start, I go into a web browser, pop in the domain name, it pops up the login. It asks for my username. This is the same username that is my Active Directory credentials. I click Next. You'll see some authentication information. One piece to note is this forgot password, and this will allow me to do password reset to Active Directory. I put in my password. And you'll notice here this authentication method. This is our different multi-factor authentication methods. In this case, I have two set up, one being email, the other being text message. It could be the mobile authenticator, an actual app of ours that goes on a mobile phone. Could be a secret question or a phone call. Now, what I will do is I will show my phone on the screen here. I will click next. And you'll see a text message come click on the message and the link here and it'll ask me if I want to approve or deny. Since I know it's me, I click approve and at this point authentication is successful and I'm brought into the user portal. Inside the user portal you'll see I have several apps. Uh, in particular I have four apps right now Office 365 and Mimecast. Those are company apps that iAdaptive has provided to me those were automatically provisioned. So when I was put into Active Directory, I was put in as a role of sales and the adaptive service recognizes that and automatically gives me access into Office 365 and into Mimecast because that's something that, that's needed for my job. Now, I am also able to add my own applications in. Now, this is policy driven, but this is something our company allows us to do. So I was able to put in Chase, my bank account, and Fidelity, my, my investment account. So I, I have one-click access into there. So now that we have these different apps within the portal, you can see if I were to click on Office 365, it automatically logs me in. Single sign-on, nice and easy. I no longer have a username and password for that. Now, I mentioned I added these applications myself. The way in which this works is I click on Add Apps. In here, it's going to pull up the app catalog. You'll see there's all sorts of pre-populated apps in here. I can search by them by name. I can uh, look at them based on various categories. I can um, you know, scroll down on some top popular ones they show. Uh, so let's do this. Let's add LinkedIn. Now, with LinkedIn, that is something that isn't provisioned by the company. So you'll see it says username and password. This is something I can add on my own. I'll say, yes, I want to add this. Let's close out of here. And it'll ask a little information. I need to put in my, my credentials because the system has no way of knowing what my username and password on this because it's a, a personal app. So I put in my username, put in my password. It's now saved. And then also I can click on this little button and it'll automatically log me in when I, I click onto LinkedIn. Coming back to Office 365, I'd like to highlight AD Federation, where Adaptive has become the central identity provider for logging into the Office 365 environment. We are certainly able to log in coming through the Adaptive portal here, but I could also open up a new web page, navigate to office365.com, and when I go and try to do a sign in here, You'll notice that it already sees who I am, and it, it's now pulling my credentials from Adaptive. So I can come here, click on Work, and then I can click on Outlook, and lo and behold, it has logged me in. Now I'd like to show you our Infinite Apps technology. I'm going to move over to a different portal here. And this is a, a legacy Centrify portal that I have. And within this, I'm going to show you how I can add a new application into the portal that isn't under the apps, uh, the Add Apps tab. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to the Adaptive Partner portal and log into this.
And you'll notice up here this little symbol here, which means I have a browser extension with the, the Infinite Apps browser extension. And when I come to log in, you'll see a pop-up that says, add this site to your user portal. So what I will do is I will change this to adaptive dash partner portal. I will click yes. And if I come back to the portal here, you'll now see that there's a logo and it's been added in. So I now have single sign on into this app that was not there before. Here, I'd like to show you one last piece, and this is about device management. I'm going to click on devices, and you'll see here it shows a phone. It says Brian's iPhone. This is my personal iPhone, which I've enrolled into the service. Now, I'm going to click on the phone, and, and we're going to start to see some details. Enrolling it means that I had downloaded an app on the phone. As part of that download process, it had put a certificate on my phone, and this way, the Centrify service is able to see what is going on with my phone. In particular, the company wanted to make sure that it's not jailbroken. It has a pin code on it. It automatically locks after one to five minutes and various security policies of that nature that makes it secure. Um, as part of that, we can also track the phone. So if I, I take a look here and, and zoom out, we'll quickly see that this phone is in the Chicagoland area. That's a good thing. That's where I am at. Now, when we enroll a phone, because it is a BYOD phone, something that is a question often asked is, what about the, the user's a applications or the user's information? Um, in particular, for me, I would care a lot about pictures. So certainly I don't mind if Centrify were to wipe their information off should I, I leave the company for whatever reason, but I don't want them to take my information. And with that, that is certainly how the, the system works. Now, what we can do is we can come in here and actually perform some actions on this phone. Um, you know, I personally can wipe the device. However, like I mentioned, the company could not wipe the device. Uh, also, if, if I, I wanted to you know, make sure policies were synced or updated automatically, I could. But what I'm going to do, I'm going to bring my phone back. Uh, let's take a quick look at it. And we can see if I were to click lock screen, I can come in here and we'll now do a push because it's under management and lock the screen. Um, I obviously don't want to highlight the wipe device, but with that, we have a lot of different ways we can manage it, and there's many different policies that will work on this. Here I'll show you a quick overview of the Centrify app. As you'll see on my phone in the bottom here, I have the app. I can click on that. It'll pop up, and you'll see all of my application tiles preloaded in here. At this point, I can click on an app. We'll use Salesforce as an example. And with one click, I have full sign-on. No need to ever enter a username and password again. Now, as part of this, we also have our mobile authenticator. Generally, the way when you're logging in off a, a computer or a laptop, you'll get a push notification to your phone. But you also have the ability to do a one-time passcode, which you can either click on in the app here, or I could enter in that eight-digit password that, that changes every 30 seconds, as you just saw there. Now, what else we have This works out rather nice is sometimes it makes a lot of sense to access a web application by clicking on it and going straight through the web page. Other applications don't work quite as well through the web page on the phone. Uh, a great example of this would be Concur. If I were to go into Concur, I can certainly log into it by clicking on the tile and going in through the, the web browser. But if I was trying to do expenses or something of that nature, not a great way to do it. So you're still able to put uh, certain native applications as configured by IT on your phone. And if you come in here, you'll see I have my Concur app. I can click on that. And what's happening is it is pointing to Centrify as a central identity provider and now I'm logged in and I, I can do something like take a, a picture of a, a receipt or whatever I was looking to do. Now what starts to become rather nice at this point is you have a true zero sign-on experience where I'm never putting a username and password again. 
and things authenticate across different platforms. So as an example, assume I was sent a text message here where I was sent a, a text for a Dropbox account. In many systems, what would happen is you'd click on that and you'd still have to sign in. However, with this, I'm automatically signed in because of the, or the, the Centrify app being on my phone. 